Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with a fantastic matched pair of Poly System pistols. Now, Poly is Samuel Poly, who was born in Bern, Switzerland in 1766, and he is the father of the modern self-contained cartridge. In 1808, he was living in France, he filed and received a French patent for a self-contained cartridge. He used a metallic cartridge base that had a small area for a primer compound. This would be using the uh, fulminate primer uh, compound invented by Alexander Forsyth just one year previously. This metallic base could then be attached to a paper or potentially any other material, like metal, cartridge body that would contain powder and a projectile, thus forming a fully self-contained and as long as it was made right, waterproof, I guess not waterproof if it's paper cartridge, but you could do this out of metal, you could seal the primer, you could create a waterproof cartridge, and that was a big part of how Pauli advertised the benefits of this system, as you've got uh, waterproofing, among other things. At any rate, uh, he created, he patented this ammunition in 1808, he then got into, got to work with a partner, um, a guy named Prelat, in France, they opened a gun shop, they started making guns. In 1812, he patents a firearm to use his new cartridges. Now what's really interesting about the, uh, the initial early poly firearm is that it doesn't use a striker or a hammer. It actually uses what's called a fire piston to ignite that fulminate priming compound. Now a fire piston is... <laughs> a lot of sources say this is an, uh, an Eastern technique used to start fires with this special like tool. I think you guys will probably be more familiar with it as the basic principle behind a diesel engine, where there's no spark in a diesel engine. Instead you have a cylinder full of gas, uh, and as it's compressed, it heats up. This is based on the fundamental principles of pressure, volume, and temperature, where if you rapidly compress a gas, you will and increase its pressure will, while decreasing its volume, you will increase its temperature. This is used in fire starting to, uh, to use just plain air to get hot enough to ignite tinder. Well, Pauli used it to get hot enough to ignite his percussion, his uh, priming compound. Really an interesting system, but a bit complex, um, dependent on some pretty tight tolerance and pretty careful manufacture and Pauli's fire piston guns didn't really go anywhere. There were small numbers of them made. He presented them to the military in France who was not interested, basically on account of it's newfangled and also it's expensive and also it looks fragile. That were basically their, their objections to it. Pauli didn't take this all that well, and by 1814 he left Paris, moved to London, uh, and never came back, and started tinkering on other stuff. He did some more fire piston gun work, but he started playing around with uh, lighter than air aircraft, and other things. His business in Paris was taken over by one Henri Rue, who continued developing ammunition systems, and Rue converted, modified, uh, poly cartridges to use a plain striker. So this is circa 1820, uh, late 18-teens to 1820 or so. The cartridge didn't have a percussion cap as we would understand it today, because it didn't have that copper or brass or other metallic cup holding the priming compound. Instead, the priming compound was just kind of smushed into the back end of the cartridge case. This made it inferior to modern cartridges, of course, but it's still tip of the ice, tip of the, the spear, like cutting edge technology in 1818, 1819, 1820. And it is that system of firing that we have in these two pistols. So Rue took over Pauli's firearms manufacturing business, continued to make guns, and made these two approximately 205 years ago. So let's take a closer look, and we'll pull off the side plates, and I'll show you exactly how they work. All right, here's the pair. As we go through these and I show you how they work, you're probably going to, at some point, have a reaction along the lines of like, wow, that's just like really simple. And that's one of the brilliant things about these guns, is that they are really quite simple. Simplicity is difficult. Uh, making something elegant and simple and functional is a lot harder than a lot of people recognize, and it's one of the really impressive aspects about Pauli, and in particular uh, his successor, Henri Hu, 
um, who was able to come up with systems like this. So, um, first off, these both have brass tags on them. These guns are were both deaccessioned at some point from the J. M. Davis Museum in Oklahoma. I think they did a like a really poorly advertised deaccession sale of some of their guns not that long ago. These came out. I don't know the details of that whole sale, but that's what these two brass tags are. Now, functionally, this is a 60 caliber pistol with roughly a 8 inch barrel on it. That's about 250 millimeters. It is single action, so we have a hammer here with a half cock notch and then a full cock notch. I'm going to drop this to half cock in order to open it. To open it, you just push this button down and the barrel pivots, and like, there you go, that's it. And you can see the rifling in there. It is, I don't know exactly how many lands and grooves that is, but it's a lot. Uh, sort of, actually it's an art, almost an artillery style of rifling. Relatively fast twist, lot of lands and grooves. You drop that down, and then you can drop in your, uh, your in this case this would be a percussion cartridge, because uh, it is the system that Rue designed that did not use a fire piston, it used an actual linear striker, in fact. The, the back end of the chamber here is beveled to fit uh, the back end of the, the metal case. Once you've got the cartridge in there, you rotate it up, bring the hammer the rest of the way back, and fire. That's it. Pretty easy, right? Let's go ahead and take the side plate off. Let me show you how these work inside. There are actually no markings on these at all. They're not serialized, they're not marked. You will sometimes find guns like this with big fancy engraving on this side plate, often saying something like poly system. Uh, these were simpler, uh, but there really is no doubt about the, the design, the origin of these pistols, because this is a really well recognizable pattern of ruse. All right, we're going to go ahead and take this one apart. It's three screws on the side plate plus this screw holding in the barrel. The way this is set up, you've got a center frame with two side plates on it, and the barrel is held in place uh, by lugs on the two frames. You'll, you'll see it in a moment. There's that screw. And we also have, you know, we have a little spacer washer. Then we can lift off the side plate there. And you can see this very simple interior. I'm going to go ahead and put this back to half cock, because when the when the hammer is forward, when the striker is forward, uh, it actually prevents the barrel from rotating because the striker tip extends out. And I do have to take this side screw out as well in order to remove the barrel. There we are. That is the barrel removed again. It's a very simple, like. Not a whole lot to that. You got your front sight and you got your rear sight on the barrel there. And then inside here, this is actually sort of hammer fired, because what we have going on is a, a long V spring down in the grip. Uh, you'll see it right there. That's the end of the V spring. It pulls this hammer down. You can see that this hook at the front of the hammer is going to retract the striker when the system cocks. The striker here is free floating but held within limits by this pin in that slot. It's going to protrude out the front there when fired. So bring it back to full cock, and we're cocking this little hammer, which when I pull the trigger is going to come up and smack this striker forward until it protrudes out the front of the frame right there. And then it is automatically retracted by the hammer right there when you recock the system. So very simple. Note that this was not intended to hit a percussion cap. It was hitting primer material set into um, essentially a little recessed uh, cup in the base of a metallic cartridge. So those, the case heads were made out of brass, but they typically had an iron reinforcing, a little iron uh, inset as reinforcement to withstand the impact of this striker. And there you go, that's a poly slash rue pistol. Like, these components are solid 
they're durable, they're simple to make, they're very effective. This is a really good design of pistol. For 1820, having a quickly reloadable uh, self-contained cartridge pistol is really pretty cool, and it's, it's a shame to Rue that his system didn't get more traction in a military or really even so much in a civilian sense. This firearm shop in Paris, initially run by Pauli and then by Rue, was is not well recognized today for the contributions that it made to firearms technology, but it was a breeding ground for quite a lot of innovation at the time. There were some pretty notable guys like Casimir Lefacheau, uh, who went on to develop the Lefacheau pinfire system, he and his son. Uh, also Nicolas von Dreisse, the German inventor who creates the needle fire Dreisse system. Both of those guys got their start working at Pauli and Rue's shop in Paris. So a really influential, interesting, cool element of firearms history. Rue would go on to continue to develop this system in 1823. He patented an, another improvement to the cartridge where instead of having the sort of ad hoc use of percussion material, of um, ignition material, he actually essentially attached the back end of a percussion cap nipple to the cartridge. So you could prime the cartridge with a standard percussion cap as of 1823. That became a much more feasible system, and we see derivations of that in things like the Roper shotgun and other cartridges. Uh, the, this specific cartridge, Ruse cartridge, never really caught on, uh, in some ways because it was a little farther ahead of technology than people were comfortable with. Uh, the, the, the general firearms market would have to go through things like pin fire before it would eventually come back to a center fire system not very far removed from what Rue came up with in 1823. Anyway, uh, I'm kind of going on a bit at length here because these are really cool early elements of firearms development that are not well recognized and not well... Uh, well, Rue and Polly don't don't get the recognition that they deserve. So hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at these two. Big thanks to Morphe's for giving me access to show them to you. Thanks for watching.